went back to Memphis in 1968, and we had, um, so, we took the Greyhound bus back to Memphis, and we spent a month in Memphis. And I um, rented an apartment so we could spend a month. And it was in Whitehaven, which was very far from Graceland. We walked down there. And again, we met El uh, Uncle Vester, and he remembered us. And he said um, he always let us come inside the guard shack, and we'd sit in there. It was winter, so it was cold, and he had a little heater in there. And um, <clears throat> so we would watch like Elvis going in and out, but we never really got to meet him yet. Well, Priscilla was due to have the baby, Lisa, then, and so we met her the night before she had Lisa, and we took a picture and and talked to her, and I said, "Is are you nervous? And she said, we both are. He's so, you know, every time a movie's there to catch me, and, and uh, so we met her that night, and then... Um, then the next day, Vester, when we came down there, he said Priscilla's water broke and they went to the hospital. So everything was so exciting in Memphis. You know, the Presley baby's going to be born. I mean, it was just on radio and TV and everything, you know. And so she was born at, I think it was like 501 or something on the 1st of, of uh, February. It was in the morning, early morning? Afternoon. Afternoon, okay. Yeah, they uh. went in the early morning, not real early. Um, and then um, she was born, and then we saw Elvis going in and out, but he didn't stop. And so then um, we actually went to the hospital, and they had nurseries back then. They didn't just put them in the mom's room. So we got to go in the hospital and actually see her in the nursery. We didn't get close or anything. She was in the back of the nursery. So then we, um, so then when Lisa came, when they were going to bring her home, was on the 5th of February. And so Vester said, they're coming home pretty soon. And they were at the Baptist Hospital taking all those pictures and everything at the time. And somebody was up on the guard, and we were inside the gate, and somebody was up on the, on the wall looking f shotgun to see when Elvis was coming. And here's Highway 51, which is now Elvis Presley Boulevard. So here is the driveway here so there's room for one car to go in unless the gate is open so you can just pull one car in and it's a highway so you have to pull in you know and stop so um, or if of several cars they could all pull in if the gates open so Vester said we made signs that said welcome home Priscilla and Lisa and he let us put them on the gate and he put some on the trees going up at the, um, the driveway and so Vester said I won't open the gate um, I let the first car in, but I won't open the gate until he sees your. They see your signs, and so the first car came in, and they were filming out the back of the of the car, and so then he closed the gates, and Elvis's car stuck in traffic out there, and then he pulled in, and then Vester opened the gate, and he they pulled in really slow, and Elvis and Elvis and Priscilla were sitting here on this side and he pulled the bank blanket back so that we could see her as they drove by really slow. So I took still pictures, you know, as they went by. And I um, always wished, you know, you see those Presley Home movies, I always wished that that would come out because I might be in their movie because they were filming out the back, but okay. they filmed going up at the top. Um, and so then the next day, I met Elvis for the first time, and Vester said, okay, if he goes out today, what I'll do is when he leaves, then when he comes back, I won't open the gate until you girls get across the driveway. We were in the guard sh shack. And so it must have been pretty comical because he honks and three girls run across the driveway and his uncle won't open the gate till they're there. <laughs> and so, and he usually was gone a couple hours and he left and 20 minutes later he was back and we were like, <laughs> We <laughs> were running around yeah. trying to find ink pens and everything and, and our pictures. To Did you sign anything? Uh, yes, I had a, a picture out of a magazine that I wanted him to sign and for my fan club. Yeah. So that next day when I met him and I gave him that picture, I said, Elvis, could you autograph this to my fan club, the Kiss and Cousin fan club? And he said, is that your fan club? And I said, yes. And he said, that's really a good one. And so on it he wrote to the Kiss and Cousins fan club, thank you for everything through the years. Which I thought was really cool that yes. he would write that. And here's an experience that 
You know, I always feel like anybody that meets Elvis for the first time never says anything coherent. You, you, <laughs> he must have, have to figure out what people are saying to him because I had two books of pictures. I made um, 10, 11, uh, 10 5 by 7s in a book of he and, P and Priscilla candid pictures. Then I had a book of about 100 candids because they were rare back then in this book for me. And Vester said, well, what you should do is let Elvis see that book too. So I gave him the other book and then I was trying to explain to him that this was a book that Vester thought he might like to look at. And he got confused and thought I wanted him to have that one. And I said, oh, no, not that one. It's too expensive. I meant priceless. <laughs> and he just laughed. And I thought, oh, gosh, how stupid is that? But I don't think anybody said anything intelligent when they met him. No, you know, you I can, hear it from everyone. You're nervous when you stay in front of him, I could imagine. Well, it was the very first. I, I loved him since 1956, and I'm standing there meeting him now. Yeah. And, and he was a tall, yeah, handsome man, right? Very handsome. And a lot I of charisma. I always tell people he was ten times more handsome in person than he was in a picture. And he was, the, I think the, the things that I read that people say that he, even though he wasn't in the room when they were there, when he came in the room, he, even if they had their back to him, they could feel his presence. Now, this sounds kind of spiritual and spooky, but it was real. I hear this all the time from all kinds of people. You just felt his presence. And... And my big thing with Elvis is that I love so much and I miss so much is his laughter. And he would get a twinkle in his eyes and he would just light up the whole room with his laughter. So That's amazing. Yeah.